Could there be a brand new Sly Cooper title coming? Let's talk about it. Whoa! What's up guys, Canadian Guy here, and back with a brand new video about our favorite raccoon. Eh, no, not the small, angry one. I'm talking about Sly Cooper. Sly Cooper is a franchise that I have always enjoyed. I played the second one first, the third one second, and the first game years later. Don't ask why. The first one was never there when I went to rent it at Blockbuster. Sly Cooper was doing very well in the eyes of all with the Thievius Raccoonus, Band of Thieves, and Honor Among Thieves all performing very well. They were all developed by the PlayStation exclusive studio, Sucker Punch. After the third game, however, the game was passed off to Sanzaru while Sucker Punch worked on Infamous. Sanzaru then made Sly 4 Thieves in Time, which was met with uh, mixed reviews. I've talked about it before, but a lot of people were really put out by the ending of Sly 4, but uh, <clears throat> we'll talk about that later. After that, Sly kind of just faded away, not to be heard of again. Until recently, with the release of the brand new Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for the PlayStation 5, they brought back a series staple, the Rhino, the final weapon in the game that is used to just destroy absolutely everything. But Insomniac decided to take it upon themselves to really make this weapon great. When you use it, it opens up a rift from another PlayStation dimension, and something interesting drops out of it. Sly fans went crazy when Murray's van had fallen out, followed by Sly Cooper himself. This all but made everyone start to think that PlayStation may have plans for the future of Sly Cooper. But is there really? Could a new game, or perhaps a remaster, be on the horizon? And if so, is there enough evidence to justify it? Well, there is not much to cling on to that says that Sly Cooper is definitely coming back, but there is hope to be had though. Let's start with Herman Hulst, the head of PlayStation Studios. He has been quoted multiple times for the following statement. While he slightly adjusted his wording and each time he said it, the meaning has largely stayed the same. He has said, quote, SIE PlayStation Worldwide Studios has 25 titles in development for PlayStation 5. Half are brand new IPs, and the other half, they're titles that are set in franchises that PlayStation fans already know and love. So, it's quite a lot. Okay, so Sony has 25 games in development, and half of them are franchises that we already know. So, brand new sequels. Another thing I want to mention is the fact that these titles are being developed under the PlayStation Studios umbrella, as in the studios that Sony owns making the games that Sony also owns. At least, that's the takeaway I have from the wording of this statement. Now, a prime example of what I'm talking about is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Sony owns the rights to Ratchet & Clank, and they own the studio that developed it, Insomniac. What's not being developed is something like Sackboy. While the IP and franchise is owned by PlayStation, the studio that made it, Sumo Digital, is not a PlayStation-owned studio, so keep that in mind. Now again, 25 games are in development, and about half of them are games that we already know. So you can't split 25 and half for a game, you can't really have half a game, so let's round it down and say 12 of them are titles that we are familiar with. That means that these are sequels and or remasters for the PlayStation 5 that are all PlayStation exclusives. That's a lot of games to be returning to. And some speculate that because Sly Cooper pops up from the Rhino and Rift Apart, it means that Sony may have plans for this devious raccoon. But of course, that's pure speculation, right? Well, something else has popped up over the past few weeks that has people scratching their heads. Recently, Funko Pop, the company that I have an unhealthy obsession collecting things from, released two new Funkos that have caught a lot of people's attention. They released Sir Daniel Fortescue with the medieval remaster design and Sly Cooper. But what's weird, is that one got a remaster in recent years, and the other, while being dormant for such a long time, has had fans chanting for a remake. Out of all the IP that Sony owns, why would they use Sir Daniel Fortescue 
and Sly Cooper. It's been speculated that because Medieval had recently gotten a remaster and was released as a Funko Pop, that the release of the Sly Cooper Funko means that a new Sly Cooper title is on the way. And it's possible it could be a remake of sorts. But from what we know, the Funko Pops have been selling like hotcakes and you can't find a Sly Cooper Funko Pop anywhere. Now, before we continue, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like, it helps a lot. Anyway, another point that I wanna make is that the first Sly Cooper was released in 2002. Now, if you're paying attention, that means that the next year for 2022, it will be Sly Cooper's 20th anniversary. Now, we all know how companies love to celebrate franchise anniversaries with either new games, announcements, or even remasters. Well, if you didn't know, PlayStation was involved with the comeback of Crash Bandicoot. They actually approached Activision and offered to help fund the project. Thus, Activision got to work and PlayStation showed off the insane trilogy during Crash Bandicoot's 20th anniversary year. It's possible Sony will want to celebrate Sly's 20th anniversary as well in some way, shape, or form. Now, before people start the onslaught of Sly Cooper is way too niche to get a remake or a remaster, I got two things to say. One, according to sales, Medieval, the original one, sold about 840,000 copies. Shadow of the Colossus sold over 1.1 million copies. What do these two things have in common? Simple. They both had full-scale remasters in recent years. The first Sly Cooper sold more than both Shadow of the Colossus and Medieval. On top of that, Sly Cooper 2 and Sly Cooper 3 had consistent sales. While the first game sold 1.5 million, the second game sold 1.35 million, and the third game sold 1.25 million. These are solid numbers and shows how dedicated the fan base is. My point is, if Medieval and Shadow of the Colossus can get a full-scale remake with less sales than Sly Cooper, then I don't think it's crazy to suggest that Sony might be interested in future Sly Cooper titles. And the second thing I want to point out is that Bluepoint, the studio behind the Shadow of the Colossus remake and the PS5 remake of Demon's Souls, was just bought as a first-party studio for Sony. Their remakes are consistent and legendary, so Bluepoint working on a Sly Cooper remake is possible. On top of that, Sony was producing a Sly Cooper movie, but things went south when Rainmaker, the company behind the production of the Sly movie, flopped horribly on the Ratchet and Clank movie. Some speculate that Sony took the project away from Rainmaker and are still unsure what to do with it, but the point is, Sly Cooper is still on Sony's radar. This video is not confirming nor denying if Sly Cooper is coming back. It's saying that it's not a large stretch of the imagination. Keep having hope because a Sly Cooper comeback is possible. Thank you so much to all those who not only support the channel, but myself and my family. Because of your contributions, I'm able to do this full time. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider clicking the join button or becoming a Patreon with the link in the description. I also live stream every Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come on by and say hi. Again, thank you to everyone and I'll see you guys in the next video and or live stream.